Hello everybody, I'm Rohan from FinSuite and the marketing lead at WISD. Today on this live stream, we've got Jonas, the creator of WISD. So Jonas, how are you feeling? Hey Rohan, doing great. How are you? I'm, I'm good, somewhat excited. Our first live stream ever. I meant to say somewhat nervous, uh, totally excited. Okay then, let's, let's see who we have in the audience. So we've got Daniel. Hey Daniel, Zavi, how are you doing? Joe, what's up? Leo, Magdalena, Jesse, so nice to see you all. On this live stream, we've divided it into four sections and I'll just run through the agenda. The first section is the introduction to WISD. The second bit is about everything that we've been working on since the last announcement live stream. And then we'll share a form where you can request to get access to WISD. We'll go through every entry and then give access to a selected few members. And then we'll wrap up with the AMA session. At the end of every section, we are going to have a Q&A session so you can interact with uh, Jonas, ask any questions related to that particular part. So to start off with, for all the newcomers uh, to the no-code space, first timers to WISD, Jonas, how can you, can you tell us in simple words, what is WISD? Sure, let's get started. Um, yeah, so first and foremost, uh, WISD is a way for you to build web applications with Webflow. So probably a lot of you already know this by this point, um, but basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to do requests to external data sources outside of Webflow um, and then basically work with the data you get from that um, data sources. And uh, by working, I mean basically connecting um, data to elements on your page so that you can display it. Um, you can also build authentication systems. You can build payment systems. And uh, yeah, really the important part here is that you can basically connect basically every backend with WIST. So it allows you to connect to an Airtable database, for example, um, as a very simple app, but also connect to uh, yeah, the OpenAI API if you want to build something with AI, um, or it allows you to connect to Xano, um, a no-code backend API service, um, yeah, and to dozens of other tools like Firebase or Superbase. Um, so you can yeah, use and leverage all of those technologies that normally only developers have access. Um, now with Webflow and uh, that allows you to build web applications. Great. And I see there is so much excitement in the community over social media in Discord channel. Um, so from your perspective, why, why is everyone so excited? Why is Wiz exciting? Yeah. Um... Yeah, like to be honest, I'm also a little bit surprised about that and to see, and I'm just awesome about, it's just awesome to see all the excitement from the community. Uh, something I would have never like imagined once I started developing this um, like a couple of years ago. So that's really good to see. Um, in general, I think what makes people excited about WIST is um, that it basically expands what they can build with Webflow and especially in terms of what kinds of project, what kind of projects they can build with Webflow. So they can build more and more complex projects. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe to tell a, a few few notes about how WIST was started and why I built WIST in the first place. Um, I, I had a Webflow agency um, some, some years ago and uh, clients always requested or, or after some time requested um, us to build some web applications, like simple web applications for startups, um, for, yeah, for, for the internal teams, like an, um, an intranet um, and, and other applications. And at the beginning, we needed to cancel those projects because we didn't have the, the, the required set of skills to build that. And also Webflow was not built for it. But after some time, I figured out a custom solution to build it. I, learned JavaScript and JavaScript frameworks, and we were able to, to offer those kinds of projects. But uh, I always thought that there must be a better way of building those web applications with WIST, and especially since Webflow is so great for building frontends. 
So yeah, that, that's that's why I set out to build WIST and uh, yeah, to circle back to the question. Um, with WIST, it, it's basically it's basically now possible for agencies and freelancers to take on those kinds of of bigger, um, more complex uh, projects, which which are web applications, and um, those are typically also very high margin projects. So. If you compare a traditional website um, with a web application, normally the web application is a few times more expensive. So that's um, definitely a lot more revenue for you as an agency owner or a freelancer. And uh, especially with a tool like WIST, which enables you to, to build those web applications without code and in a very fast way, much faster than with traditional coding, um, you can increase your margins. and. Uh, yeah, that's why I think it's also quite quite interesting for developers, uh, for for Webflow developers to to learn this kind of of new tool. Great, and I think that statement goes perfect, leans perfectly towards the next question, and that is, what skill set should a person have to be a successful or a proficient WIST developer? Yeah, that's a good question. We get asked this all the time in, in Discord and in our support. Um, I think in general, what's what's first and foremost really important is that you know Webflow. So Wiz is not a platform that uh, somebody that has never used Webflow should use. It's not something that a new developer should just come across and uh, with no Webflow experience should try to build something. Um, just because it will be very hard without the basics of knowing Webflow to build something usable with WIST. I think if you have no experience with Webflow, it might be better for you to just uh, choose another UI builder um, or web application builder to complete your project. For example, Bubble um, would be probably a great fit there. But if you want to leverage Webflow and especially the power that Webflow gives you when it comes to creating um, yeah, great and, and beautiful and clean uh, UIs, then um, yeah, stick with Webflow and uh, use WIST. Yeah, so that's basically, I think, the, the general first note to that. Then um, what's also always very usable is some degree of knowledge about how requests work. You don't need to be a developer you don't need to be a coder or have any background in there. It probably is enough to just uh, type it into YouTube and watch some videos about uh, how do HTTP requests work. Uh, and that will help you grasp the underlying concepts behind what Wiz is doing and uh, how the data is being fetched and loaded into your Webflow projects with Wiz. So yeah, I think with, with that together, um, you should have already quite a good skill set to to dive into our tutorials and uh, Emmanuel has done a great job of uh, creating a huge library of, of tutorials so if you go to help.wiz.com um, you can just see our our learning path we have a beginner learning path we have an advanced learning path and uh, you can you can dive in there and watch some some hours of video content and uh, then I just recommend you to yeah, just start with your first project, um, maybe a clonable. We will go into that a little bit later, but uh, maybe a clonable, uh, try to rebuild it, try to, to see how it is built, try to understand it, and uh, then slowly start with your own projects. A follow-up question is, would people need to know JavaScript to use WIST? Mm -hmm. Or is it an entirely no-code tool? What so do you recommend? It it is a no-code tool in terms of that you can build a fully working web application with WIST without writing a single line of JavaScript. So the WIST user interface, the WIST configurator, as we call it, um, is, is basically fully functional without writing a single line of code. However, as it, only, as it also is with Webflow, if you know a little bit of CSS and HTML, that will help you go the extra mile there. That will help you to, to take some projects and build some maybe custom sliders or some, some custom components in Webflow that you couldn't have been building with only the tool set provided by Webflow. And that's similar with WIST. 
a little bit of JavaScript can really bring you very far here. Um, and uh, yeah, so we recommend to, to understand and know the basics um, at the, yeah, some, some data, some, something uh, working with variables, working with data, uh, working with arrays that will help you get very far in WIST. And I think the, the most experienced developers we see right now in WIST, they have a bit of that knowledge. However, they also got it during, they ta during that time learning WIST. So I think our most successful developers right now, they didn't have this JavaScript knowledge when they started. They just learned it along the way. And uh, also we have um, our great customer support team, which is also supporting you on JavaScript questions. So if you have anything that's not working, um, in general in your project or something you want to figure out, feel free to, to shoot us a message in our customer support, um, either in Discord or in our chat. And uh, our customer support team will try to come up um, with, a, with a customer solution with, for you um, to support you with that. So um, yeah, I think we covered a couple of use cases already. We also have a collection of cheat sheets of, of JavaScript uh, cheat sheets, basically that we published for very common use cases where you might need a little bit of JavaScript. Um, but our our support team is also helping you uh, setting this up if you need help. Perfect. And my final question would be: How can freelancers and agencies use WIST to generate more revenue in twenty twenty three? Yeah, so I already outlined it a little bit before. WIST can be a great tool for you to, to just take on those small complex projects. Um, so those small complex projects like web applications um, normally come with more revenue. And I think that will be the way for you to, to earn a little bit more this year. So if you, if you try, um, try out WIST, maybe play around and uh, start with your first clonable, then build a very small project by yourself. And then maybe you can already start with a, with a more complex project or a, co a client project. So it, it's probably a learning time of a one or two weeks um, investment for an experienced Webflow developers, uh, for experienced Webflow developers, I would say, uh, to get started. But then it really allows you to go to the next level with, with Webflow and to, to tackle much much better paid projects and uh, yeah, projects that, that are in general of a higher volume. Okay, great. I see we've got an interesting question from Isaiah Gordon. He asks, does WISD use Webflow attributes? Um, yes, we use Webflow attributes. Um, I wouldn't call them Webflow attributes personally. I would rather call them HTML attributes. Um, because actually under the hood, um, Webflow is it's just using the, the traditional, um, yeah, element um, attribute uh, functionality in the background. But uh, yeah, basically all the, the connections that you do, um, the, the way you connect data to the elements, that is being done via setting up attributes and then basically setting up functionality and, and those connections on top of the attributes. Mm. And in, in WIST, that's what we call actions uh, right now. You will see it later uh, when we share the screen. Great. I'd like to highlight this really nice comment by Nelson Orlando. He says, today I have a startup chosen by a government program to fund my company and start a scaling process. All this thanks to Webflow, WIST, and Zano. That is fantastic. I love seeing comments like that. Great. Yeah, that's awesome to see. OK, so on to the next part, WIST Wednesdays. So about a month ago, we started this initiative called WIST Wednesdays, wherein we release something every Wednesday. That something can be a clonable, a YouTube tutorial, a WIST product update, or a live stream like we're doing today. And now I'd like to show some um, live examples, the clonables that we have built for WIST. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So Gabe, could you switch screens, please? So here on WIST.com forward slash showcase, you can find all the clonables that we have released. So far, it's been the weather widget, classified ads, Maya, Wanderlust, and Amico. And today, we'll briefly go over three of them. 
starting off with the weather widget. Now, every clonable that we release has this readme page. Jonas, can you tell the users why this readme page is so important? Yes, of course. Um, so we decided to not only offer the pages of the actual web application with the clonable, but actually put a very similar readme page in front of every clonable we release. And we do that to make it very easy for you to access the documentation around the clonable re-release. So uh, as you can see here, Rohan is scrolling right now, and you can see some, some guidelines on how to clone the projects. Um, you will be able to see all the, the resources like the Webflow website, the WIS project, and all the, the backend tools we use to build this project. And uh, the, it's basically a one-stop solution for you. So you just open this, this uh, readme page, and um, in this section, that, that Rohan, uh, Rohan is highlighting right now. You can see all the information required to, to build that clonable yourself and also to obtain the, the clonable version and get it into your WIST account. So um, yeah, pay attention to those videos created by Manuel. He did a really good job explaining um, all the stuff going on in, in the respective clonable. And um, yeah, I think I think that, that came out very well. And I'm really excited about... Uh, a lot of new clonables that we have in the pipeline and we're going to release over the next weeks. Great. So let's check out the weather app. Um, I'll type in random cities. This app is going to show us the current weather live data of any city in the world. So Jonas, what happens when, when I type this in? That's so, yeah, what's exactly happening? Uh, that's a good question. So as you know, we are on a Webflow domain here. So everything is hosted in Webflow natively. And there's also no custom code involved, except the WIST embed, of course. Um, so what happens here is that basically there's a listener on this, on this input field. And whenever Rohan is changing it, there's an event that fires. And this event is triggering uh, a request to an API that is providing some, some information about the weather. And to this API, we basically just send over the, the content of the input field. And this API then provides us with some, with some data, um, like the temperature, um, the current cloud cover, and uh, some more details about that. And uh, then basically we just display the content that we received um, via those attribute connections and uh, just re-render it every time there's new data. Great. However, and the re-rendering process and this whole connection process is all handled by, by WIST automatically. So there's no nothing manual for you to set up. And uh, yeah, we have this, this uh, ready and online as a clonable. So feel free to, to clone it, check it out for yourself how it's built. Uh, it's a very simple project. So it normally, I think we have a full, full build video also about that. And it takes mm -hmm. like around 15 minutes to build. So it's, um, it's really something that you can just start out to see the basics of how to how to work with WIST. Great. One of my favorite uh, clonable projects is this one. We are literally interacting with AI, we are using chat GPT three to generate an itinerary. Now, it does take some time to get a response. So Jonas, could you tell me what happens just after I click this button? While we wait, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll switch over to the configurator and you could show me some things in here. Sure. So um, what, what happens is, again, quite similar, actually, to what happens also with the weather project. Um, so in the background, um, once Rohan clicked this, this button, there was a request firing. Um, a data out request here uh, called send details and it's using the open ai rest api um, to basically yeah generate this this kind of data and uh, then in the response we again get some data back and we then just display this data in the in the ui so you see those four actions, um, and, and one of them is render response, submit details. This one is a trigger for the request. Um, display loader, this is loading animation, of course, that we want to show 
while the request is loading and then um, display itinerary wrapper, which is again, another uh, visibility wrapper, which basically is just toggling um, the itinerary, um, making it visible and invisible based on the request that is. So um, yeah, and that's basically what we got back. So as Rohan uh, is showing right now, we have generated um, a, a, a trip plan basically um, for just a city we typed in. And uh, yeah, this is the data basically coming back raw from the OpenAI API. So there was nothing involved on our end. This is basically a new generation every time. Yeah. And the cool thing is it's interacting with Webflow rich text. So the data we receive is in HTML format. So it works wonderfully. Yes, exactly. We okay. just basically fill a, a rich text uh, field with that response. Great. And on to the final clonable, that would be Maya. So Jonas, what can you tell us about Maya? What's happening here? Yeah, this clonable is also quite amazing. Uh, it represents a store for a, a B2B store, basically. So uh, not a B2C e-commerce store, but a B2B score, uh, store where one is able to order items in large quantities. So that's the theme of this clonable. And uh, so what we implemented here is basically we implemented the shopping cart, we implemented um, uh, loading some products from our product database. And uh, then we also implemented the whole order management and uh, yeah, we, we, have a, we have a login for clients, basically. We have a login for the store owner. And uh, yeah, the store owner is, is able to see and manage the orders. And the client is able to log in and see the status of his orders. So all that, again, managed uh, with WIST. And in the back end, we use Zano for this clonable. Um, and the Zano backend uh, is also included in this clonable. Yeah. And another fun thing about it is it's integrated with um, FinSuite attributes for filter and sort. So that's one of yes. our latest uh, updates made to WIST. Yes, exactly. We are now fully compatible with um, attributes, filtering and sorting. So you can just, you don't need to, to write JavaScript to, to do some filtering inside of WIST. You can simply use the attribute way um, that you already know and are familiar with. And this makes it very, very simple to just build some filtering and sorting out of the data you loaded from an arbitrary um, backend. And uh, this makes, makes this part really easy to use. Okay, great. So let's see if we have any questions in the comments section. Um, great, I think so I saw a question uh, beforehand, and that was how secure is WIST? And mm -hmm. uh, I, I would like to answer and, and talk about that question a little bit. So um, first, the the short answer is um, that it really depends on the backend you're using. So if you think of WIST, so yeah, I, I always like to think of WIST as a framework that you can put on top of your Webflow page, which allows you to build web application-like functionality. However, WIST in its general sense is not a backend. So there is no backend functionality involved for most of the requests. Um, that also means that if you're using a backend that you, or that you built with another provider um, or you built customly, WIST will never obtain any of the data that you are displaying um, or sending from your web application. So if you use, for example, a Zano backend, um, WIST will only trigger the requests and work with the received data, but it will never actually in the backend obtain this kind of data. And you can actually verify this as well with the network tab in the debugger tools of, of Chrome, for example. You can check what requests are going out. You can see um, that there's no, no request going out to WIST um, that is submitting any data to us that from your users personally. There's only one use case where WIS is processing some data, and that is if you're using um, our Notion or Airtable integrations, or if you use the setting to execute a request, a REST request server side. So um, those three request types basically need us to 
um, to process or to, to execute those requests on our server um, because the API key um, needs to be private. So in those cases, the request is being triggered by the Webflow front end, but then routed and actually executed through our backend. And this is the only point in time where we get in, in touch with the, the data, but we never, of course, log it and we never um, process it in any way. We just route it through our backend. Great. Um, I've got a question inspired by Pablo Cortez. So how different is Webflow memberships from membership platform that you would create using WIST? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, in the first glance, it seems quite similar, right? Because mm -hmm. with both systems, you can build some sort of membership, some sort of login functionality, and um, yeah, can can basically um, gate content to users. I think that's the main functionality what what Webflow has been built for. Um, and with Wiz, you can do all of that as well. So first of all, it might seem confusing, but actually under the hood, those are very different solutions for very very different um, problem sets. So while Webflow membership was was mainly built to gate CMS content and to get, gate some some static pages that you have in Webflow, WIST was built to bring in dynamic data from external data sources. So um, with with using Webflow memberships, you're 100% inside of the Webflow ecosystem and limited by the functionalities they offer or do not offer. Um, and with WIST, you basically have the full freedom of using any backend you like, um, any, any authentication system you like, um, and you're able to also, and that's, I think the main part, bring in dynamic user data and display this dynamic data, um, to, to logged in users. So you can basically have your site displaying different data for every user, um, not only gate content for a specific user base. And uh, I think that's that's where where WIS is coming in really powerful. So, for example, if you want to build like a booking system where every user should be displayed his orders, then that's something, for example, you cannot build with Webflow memberships out of the box, but that's something you can build with WIS. Perfect. Okay, so on to the focal point of this live stream. Um, Jonas, can you tell us what we've been working on since the announcement live stream that you had with Joe? Yes, it was a lot. I will probably forget a couple of things. Um, but luckily also, uh, we released our updates page. So when you go to wizcom slash updates, uh, you're now basically able to see the full history of what we released since um, that, that, that live stream um, last year in August. Um, and it was a lot. Like I think um, the main things being a lot of performance improvements, a lot of stability improvements. We are still in early access, so there are still some things we're working out, uh, but it's getting more and more stable and we see a lot of users building client projects and uh, very serious projects already on our platform. Um, then, of course, we released support for more API requests. Um, for example, we released support for real-time uh, Superbase and uh, Firebase um, connections so that you can basically build chat apps. And I can also tether this. There will be a clonable um, with a chat app function uh, released in the upcoming weeks. Uh, then, of course, we introduced attribute support. Um, we made a couple of UI improvements. And uh, we are also working on a couple of very exciting new improvements right now. Um, also, we made some, um, yeah, we, we, our team did grow a little bit. We are now more and more stable um, and uh, yeah, a, a lot of exciting stuff happened. Right. So next question, can you tell us a little bit about what's on the roadmap? What can we see coming in the, uh, coming in the next few weeks or maybe months? Sure. So um, in, in general, there is um, a bigger refresh in the works right now. Uh, I'm not telling exactly what it is, but I think it will be very pleasant for a lot of you. And this bigger refresh will be released 
um, sometime in the next, I would say, four to eight weeks, probably. Um, and uh, yeah, this will be very exciting for a lot of you. Um, and uh, together with this refresh, there will be also a couple of other changes that we will introduce. So watch out for some bigger announcements um, in, in that time period. Um, yeah, that's something we can definitely uh, we say, I don't want to talk more about it and already take the announcement uh, now earlier than planned. But uh, one thing that we are also working on right now um, is server-side rendering to enable you to serve um, data from, from external data sources uh, pre-rendered, which basically enables you to build uh, SEO-optimized websites. Uh, this, so this will release as well. It's something I can talk about. Uh, it's already in the works. And uh, yeah, just a couple of, of other performance and uh, stability improvements, and also some items of, of the wish list that you shared with us in Discord are also on the development and uh, will release. Great. OK. And now I think the most exciting question, when will WIST fully launch to the public? Yeah, that's uh, probably one of the questions we get asked the most. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we have, we, as you know, we are right now in early access. So, uh, right now it's basically the time for us to really make sure we 100% stable, uh, that we work very closely with the, with the people using our platform, uh, that we make improvements. And, um, I think that in our current roadmap, like right now we are already getting very uh, stable and, um, we have a lot of serious production uh, projects built with us um but i think during the next like let's give it four to to 12 weeks i think we will reach a state where it will make sense for us to finally go public um i can't share a specific date with you yet but i think that is roughly the timeline of where you can expect this um, yeah, so at this point in time, then we will probably go out of the peer-to-peer -peer invite system and uh, basically enable a normal registration and sign-up process. Okay, great. And up until then, if users are looking to get access, then I would definitely recommend everybody to fill up this form. I have just shared it in the chat. Um, so put in the request we will have a look at every single entry and next week we are going to give access to a whole bunch of people so that's there yes. and and if you don't get access yet then you can ask your friends on social media or anywhere for for an invite code um jonas could you tell us a little bit about the peer-to-peer -peer invite system that we built for for this very purpose yes so first of all i want to say that this Airtable link we just shared is quite a big deal um Please fill it out if you don't have access yet. We will read through all your submissions and uh, we will hand out a lot of access codes, I think, to, to the people submitting this form. So this is a special one-time occasion for you to get access if you have not gotten access yet. Um, we will definitely work it through the next days and uh, we'll, we'll give out access. Not, not today, not tomorrow, but probably in the next um, week. Um, Oh, oh, Rohan, do you have anything more to share regarding the access of this form? Uh, yes. So we will keep it live for 48 hours. So until 12 p.m. Okay. ET Friday, and then we will close the form. So share with your friends, share it on social media. We'll then have a look at every single entry. And next Wednesday, we are going to give access to a whole bunch of people. Great. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, in general, the peer-to-peer -peer invite system, um, let me circle back to this a little bit. So we initially started out last year with basically um, the chance to get one invite code every month uh, for each user. And we have since then now increased this to get one invite code every week per user. So we have already quite ramped up um, the ratio of invites going out. And uh, if you already have an account, if you already have access, I can only encourage you to share this code with others on social media. We've seen a lot of demand for it, um, for those access codes um, in, in the past, and we really encourage you to share them. 
Um, a good place to share them as well is also our Discord channel. We have a dedicated um, our, our Discord server. We have a dedicated channel in there uh, called WIST Invites. And uh, in there, a lot of people are asking for those codes. So if you want to give a little bit back to the community, this is a place where you can share access codes you receive. Great. Uh, Jonas, I'd like to ask you a question. I, I heard some stories about people selling in white codes. I think that's not right. What, what do you say? Yes, we heard this over the last days um, and we strongly discourage this. Uh, it's definitely not something we want to promote. Um, it's, it's something that's probably naturally when there's a high demand for, for something and uh, a very low supply. But um, yeah, going forward in the future, we really do not encourage this. And uh, if we see this recurring in some users, we might consider banning those users attempting to do this. Um, so we will we will punish this behavior going forward um, because it's not something we want to see. Okay, great. So the AMA session is coming up. If you have any question for Jonas, please go ahead and post them. Uh, we've got two more announcements to make. Uh, FinSuite is looking to hire with developers. So if you'd like to apply for that position, I am sharing that link now. And second is we have released WISD merch. So if you'd like to buy some WISD t-shirts, then the merch store is the place to go for it. Um, I should get one of those. I still haven't got any WISD merch, but I should definitely uh, order some finally. Definitely. I saw one question um, from one of the users. I can't find it, but he asked, if all of this can be done using make like and i know we've released an update for an integration with zapier and make so how does that work with wist yeah let me tell you a little bit about that so uh wist has an integration for make and zapier and mm -hmm. what this basically allows you to do is it allows you to use the webhook functionality of Zapier and Make. So you can basically create a webhook trigger in both uh, Zapier and Make, and then trigger some functionalities um, in those platforms from WIST. And you can even um, yeah, build a flow that returns even some data from Zapier and Make. So you can build your own no-code backend with tools like Zapier and Make. Um, for my personal recommendation, I would recommend to build those kinds of flows with Make, um, as they have the the better user interface, in my opinion, when it comes to complex multi-step uh, workflows. Great. Um, I've got another question. Uh, recently, we released an update for support for multiple input for variables. So could you tell us a bit more about that? Obviously, I'm not uh, actively working on building WIS projects. So some of these concepts are new to me. And I think it might be really helpful to, to get an explanation on that. Yes. So that's something um, we, yeah, we introduced in version two of WIST, the possibility to render lists and even lists inside of lists. So that's something that, that Webflow, for example, is, um, has, has always bugged me a little bit that it was not possible to render CMS items or to render a collection of CMS items inside another collection of CMS items. I think they now released support for this uh, some time ago, but it's still um, very limited. And you can not nest deeper than two levels. Um, and with Wiz, you now can basically nest infinitely um, and really render arrays inside of arrays. And um, now we basically only also released the, um, the, the, the possibility to input um, to put in forms into those rendered lists. So you can put input forms and checkboxes and they will all work natively with those rendered lists. Um, and that's basically a support we just released a couple of weeks ago uh, that was not possible beforehand with the release of V2, but it's something we worked on and, uh, and made possible so that now the rendered lists and um, rendered nested lists functionality is complete. Great. Um, and another question I had was, what can we use the WIST JavaScript API for? Like what kind of non-native functionality can be built on top of that? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's also something we released um, last year. Um, the with JavaScript API is basically meant for making it possible to work with applications, front end applications um, that are not WIST. So let's say you want to integrate with the JavaScript framework for building charts, then uh, probably you will want to to initialize that chart uh, with JavaScript and still get the data you loaded from WIST. And that's where the WIST JavaScript API is coming in. Um, also, it allows you to trigger requests based on custom actions that you built. Um, and you can basically access the full data store that's inside of WIST with the with JavaScript API. And you can trigger um, custom requests and set custom variables with the JavaScript API. So um, yeah, that, that's what it allows you to do. It basically just expands the the possibilities of what you can build with WIST, especially when thinking of um, integrating with with other front end libraries or JavaScript libraries. Great. Um, so Christian Smith asked an interesting question. Do Webflow know that we can use WIST and SSR to build websites without the need to buy high CMS plans? Do they have a problem with that? Um, yes. So that's definitely something uh, we want to make very clear. We will require you to have Webflow hosting in place for server side rendering to work. We do not um, attempt to take any revenue away from Webflow. Think of it like an additional service that we will offer. Um, it's, it's something that will enable some functionalities for you, but we never attempt to take any revenue away from Webflow. Great. And Shirlet asks, when will the Black Peak Marketplace uh, launch and why Black Peak? Great. Um, so yeah, first of all, Black Peak has been a great partner for us since already more than a year. Uh, they have been some of the first building very complex enterprise projects already with version one of WIST when it was in the very early stage. Um, they have been giving a lot of support back then. They have been very active in the community, uh, basically answering questions every day since then. Um, so that's just a partner we're very, very grateful for. And uh, we we thought we wanted to give a little bit back and um, yeah, basically let them take over the initiative of building the official clonable marketplace for WIST. And uh, that's something I will not talk more about today, uh, but I know that there have been some rumors uh, regarding this. And I can tell you that it's in the works. Um, it has a, a special name and um, it will release sometime later this year. And I think will also be quite exciting for a lot of, a lot of you. Um, we are releasing some, some clonables as we just talked about, some free clonables, but they will also be paid more complex um, clonables for specific use cases in the future. And this might also be an exciting revenue stream for you as a WIS developer. Um, as you know, the Webflow marketplace um, and a uh, lot of projects being, being sold there and uh, created there. This might also be something you can dive in as a WIS creator um, sometime later back this year and basically release your own paid clonables on this marketplace. Great. So Tech Audit TV asks, what would be the main advantages in moving from a bubble plus Zano stack to a Webflow WIST plus Zano stack? Yeah, um, I think the main advantage, and I heard this over and over again, uh, from, from bubble to WIST is that in bubble, you are stuck with the bubble UI configurator. And uh, I heard a lot of reports that this is not the optimal configurator for for people that know Webflow and that know all the flexibilities and and uh, great design options that Webflow offers. So um, yeah, especially when people love to use with web when people love to use Webflow for the front end, um, they will also want to to use Bubble. Uh, they will want to use WIST, of course. Um, for people, of course, that have never used Webflow, uh, Bubble, I think, is a great alternative um, because it, it's an all-in-one platform, so we don't need to deal with, with two tools, but um, Webflow users will like or often get frustrated with their UI designer. Okay, great answer. 
I see we don't have any more questions. So I think this will be the end of the AMA session. Um, so Jonas, do you have any closing remarks to share? Um, yeah, I, I definitely wanted to um, talk a little bit also about the support we gave out. So when you have any questions, learning with, uh, first of all, check out our intelligence center. It's help.wiz.com. And uh, if you have any questions there, please, please also check out our Discord forum. Uh, that's where basically all the talk is happening. We have more than 1,000 members uh, actively talking there every day about different kinds of uh, issues and solutions for, for WIST. And uh, we are also quite active there. And if that doesn't help you, feel free to, to reach out to us via chat. Um, we have a chat inside of WIST that you can just open up and where you can send messages to us and our team will get back to you in no time. Great. Um, I've got a couple of things to, to say. If you like this video, then please hit the like button. Uh, it'll help us spread, spread out on the YouTube platform. Subscribe to the channel to get updates. Um, we are now sending out newsletters almost every Wednesday talking about a clonable. So sign up uh, for the newsletter on our website, that is wis.com. Uh, apart from that, thank you everybody for joining. Um, take care and good luck. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.